I was about midway through my sermon and I looked up and, mm -hmm. and, and my tablet wasn't here with the camera. And so I was like, and I was in the middle of the sermon. I'm like, so what am I supposed to do now? The folk in Facebook land just short. <laughs> but we praise God. Amen. Amen. So I want to make sure everything is on and functioning. Amen. But we bless God this morning. Amen. Take your Bible in your hand. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I believe every word. I am who it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do by hearing his word and applying it by faith. It'll change my life. So I declare right now from this day forward that my life will never ever ever be the same again and neither shall the life of anyone with whom I share this word so I declare I'm going to share this word with someone so that their life may be changed forever in Jesus name amen give God praise as you take your seat Amen. Glory to Amen. You, Lord. Amen. Amen. We want to commend Elder Hobson and Pastor Stephanie for staying deep in prayer. Y'all see they got the wardrobe selection right this morning. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, Minister Betty and Minister Charles, y'all, y'all got close. Y'all, y'all, y'all didn't pray long enough. Y'all need, y'all needed to tarry a little bit longer. <laughs> Yeah, y'all, y'all got, y'all got part way. Yeah, y'all didn't, y'all didn't stay down long enough. Y'all didn't stay loud long enough. Hey, Amen. We praise God. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Precious God, Lord, we thank you today. Father, we thank you for the moments of preaching. Father God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for every opportunity, Lord, to just draw near unto your throne, Lord, to hear from heaven. Father God, Lord, we just ask you now, Father God, Lord, that you would move me aside, speak to your people that they would hear from heaven. Father God, because we Lord, we know when we can see, hear, and understand and be willing to be changed, Father God, you can heal us. So Father God, Lord, we come to receive healing today. Lord, we desire to be whole. Father God, we desire to be transformed into who you have already called us to be. And so Father God, Lord, because we know when we're changed, Father God, Lord, the worth around us will be changed. Father God, the atmosphere. Father God, Lord, every place our feet shall tread upon, Lord, we shall take for the kingdom. And Father God, Lord, we declare our communities, our families, Father God, God, Lord, our country, Father God, Lord, shall be changed, Lord, for you. And Lord, so we thank you today. And Father God, Lord, we bind every contrary spirit, every demonic force, anything that would attempt to hinder us from becoming and, and doing all that you said we could do. Lord, we ask you now, Lord, to just till up the soil of our hearts, Lord, that we may receive, Lord, the unadulterated word of God, Father God, that has the ability, Lord, Father God, to save our souls. And we thank you, Lord, for it all today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> Open your Bibles with me once again to the book of Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. We've been in that scripture so long you ought to drop your Bible on the floor. It ought to fall right there. Amen. Because as you know, we've been focused on our relationship with God. Because the church was never intended to just be a place that we go. Tell your neighbor, your relationship with God, relationship with God was, meant to be personal. was meant to be personal. As a matter of fact, Peter reminds us that we are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that we may declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. And we know that that phrase, declare the praises, means to demonstrate the glory. And that our assignment is to represent the one who chose us. Because as Paul teaches us in the Corinthian letter, we are God's representatives in the earth and our lives speak for Christ. Well, in Matthew 16, we see where Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? In other words, what do people think about me? But when they respond, he immediately turns the attention back to them by saying, who do you say that I am? Or what does your life say about me? And in verse 16, Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. In other words, if you look at my life, it's obvious I follow the anointed one, the son of the living God. In verse 17, Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, 
For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Now, I told you this is significant because Simon is derived from the Hebrew word shama, meaning to hear or to listen attentively in order to obey. And the word by Jonah means son of a dove. So essentially what he said to him was, you are empowered to succeed because you hear and obey that which is born of the Holy Spirit. Because he didn't get that from the flesh. Amen. It was a result of revelation. Now, in verse 18, he says, and I also say to you that you are Peter or a piece of rock. And on this rock or the revelation of who I am, I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. See, the church or the ecclesia, those who have been called out will be established or get their stability from the revelation of who Jesus is. Because when you recognize who he is, you'll know who you are. The Bible says we were predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So he is the pattern or the image of who we're supposed to be. Amen. Now, we know that Peter was flawed. But I told you, demonstrating God's glory is not about who we are, but instead who he is. Amen. Because it's what we believe about him and what he says about us that should be manifested in our lives. But have you ever wondered why Peter's behavior was so erratic? One minute he's receiving divine revelation. The next, Jesus is rebuking him and calling him Satan. One minute, he's defying the laws of gravity, walking on water. The next, he's ready to cut somebody's ear off. One minute, he's with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. The next, he's cussing a girl out and denying he ever knew him. Tay neighbor sounds a lot like church folk. Well, that's because... He had issues with his character. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? Sometimes he was led by his flesh and others by the spirit. And it was not until he learned to consistently follow after the spirit did he truly develop the character of Christ. Amen. And that's what I want to talk to you all about this morning. Our character. Amen. Is that all right? That's all right. Because if we truly desire to demonstrate his glory, we must develop the character of Christ. Amen. Go to Romans chapter 8. Now, I might as well go ahead and put you on notice. This will not be a shouting message. So you might just want to get you a preemptive shout out now. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 because I don't want you to go home feeling like you got cheated. Because there might not be a lot of opportunities where you feel like shouting. But if you get some revelation, you'll recognize that shouting ain't got nothing to do with your feelings. Y'all in Romans 8? Look at verse 5. Here he says, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on, focus on, or pursue the things of the flesh, things that they perceive with and that will satisfy their natural senses. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit, you know, those things that are perceived by and will please the spirit of God. He says for to be carnally minded, Consumed by human reasoning and sensual pleasures is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. In other words, if you allow your life to be consumed by human reasoning and sensual pleasures, it will not benefit you. He says, 
because the carnal mind is enmity against God or it's hostile toward God. And as we just learned in praise and worship, victory belongs to Jesus. Amen. So if you are carnally minded, it says that you are hostile toward God. So that sounds like to me to be a futile effort. Because what it sounds like to me is that you already set out to lose. Because your arms are too short to box with God. He says, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Amen. See, here we see that when we're in the flesh, we cannot please God. That's, right. That's, right. That's because the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. See, our flesh was designed to trust in our senses. And faith by definition is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things you cannot see. So if you can't see it, your flesh can't get with it. All right. So flesh does not operate by faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. So as long as you're in faith, God's not pleased. In flesh, God's not pleased. See, our flesh was designed to trust in our senses. What we can see, hear, smell, taste, and touch is how we were designed to interact with the world. But it was never meant to determine how we live. Right. Let me help y'all see this. How many of y'all know what a compass is? Yeah. See, it's a device that shows direction. Well, let me ask you a question. What direction does the needle on a compass point to? See, that's not exactly true because a compass is designed to point in the direction where it senses the greatest magnetic attraction, which is usually north. But if it senses something stronger, in other words, if you put a magnet close to it, yeah. it can be deceived. Oh, wow. Come on. Uh -oh. See, because it cannot perceive the truth. Well, it's the same with your flesh. It's a tool meant to interact with the environment. Right. To sense what is around it. But it's not 100% reliable. So if we're going to develop our character, we have to understand how we were created. Go over to Genesis chapter 1. See, one of the things that I find so interesting when talking to believers is that believers always seem to have a tendency to want to talk about what they're experiencing. Mm -hmm. And my question is, but aren't you a believer? So by definition, what you're experiencing isn't the truth. Yeah, I'm gonna let you swallow that for a minute. <laughs> Hey neighbor, this is big people food. Yeah, I need to give you time to chew and swallow. Y'all in Genesis 1? Look at verse 26. It says, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle and all the earth, and over everything that creeps on the earth. In other words, God said, I want them to look like me and to have my character 
and abilities. Well, what does God look like? John tells us God is a spirit. Yes. Tell your neighbor, God is a spirit. God is a spirit. Tell your other neighbor, and so are you. And so are you. In verse 27, he says, So God created man in his image, and in the image of God he created him, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Amen. See, we were created in the image of God. And he gave us his character and his abilities. See, his abilities are known as the gifts of the spirit. Which gave us the power to do all things. Yes. And his character is called the fruit of the spirit. Yes which enabled us to live like God. Amen. But then sin entered the equation and corrupted our spirit. Yes. What do you mean, Pastor? Go over to Genesis 2. And look at verse 7. Here he says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into the, his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. See, for years, this was considered to be the creation of man. But we just saw that man was actually created in Genesis 1.27. See, this is only where he received a body. And I told you the body was only to be a tool with which he could interact with the world around him. But the problem was man became so comfortable in the body that he put more trust in the tool than in the spirit. And he began to limit his ability to what he could do, see, and experience in the body. And his spirit was corrupted. But our spirit has been renewed in Christ. See, you missed your opportunity to shout. I told you they were going to be few and far between. I'll go back. But our spirit has been renewed in Christ. Amen. All right now. And once we realize that we were meant to operate according to the spirit, it will change how we respond to the world. As a matter of fact, go with Ephesians 2. verse 1 Ephesians 2 beginning at verse 1 and it says and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. See, he said he renewed our spirit because we were once dead. And see, we used to follow the course of the world because we were allowing our flesh to lead us. Because we were actually following the prince of the air. See, if you decided you were going to live your life according to the news that was presented by a particular channel, and I own the station, then in all actuality, I'm now running your life. Because whatever I show you will dictate the course that you go. So that's what he said. You were once walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air. He said you once followed the feedback that you got from the world 
but the prince of the power of the air controlled what you experienced in the world. And that's why, because you were following the flesh, you were in death. But he said he renewed your spirit. He said that's the same spirit who is now works in the sons of disobedience. See, those people who don't have a relationship with God have no choice but to follow their flesh. Because they have nothing else leading them. He said, among whom we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature children of wrath. He said, and by that very activity puts you on the receiving end of God's wrath. Just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. The Amplified Bible says he gave us the very life of Christ himself. Yes. He gave you the very life of Christ himself. Yes. By grace you have been saved and raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Yes. He said, and he did all that so that he could show off what he had done through us. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. He said, because you didn't do it yourself, it was only what God gave you. Amen. Not by works. You didn't earn it. He said, because if you did, then you could boast about it. He said, but we are his workmanship. Yes. God accomplished this. Yes. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. See, God did this because he had something planned. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. He had a plan for us. He desired us to demonstrate his glory. We have been given the very life of Christ himself, so we should be walking after Christ's example Amen. instead of the world's. Right. But if we're going to demonstrate his glory, we've got to develop his character. Yes. Go over to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. When you get to look at verse 1. Here he says, since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. So in other words, he says, you need to focus on kingdom stuff and stop focusing so much on the world stuff. Amen. Amen. He says, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Amen. When Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Now this is tight. See, when I, when I looked at that verse, I, I kept looking at it, I kept looking at it, and this is how I saw this thing. He says, you died and your life is now hidden in Christ. Amen. See, I don't have to worry. The reason why pride is not an issue for me, the reason why Shame is not an issue for me. The reason why I don't worry about what people have to say about me, I see because, see, I'm not here. I'm dead. I don't have to worry about justifying myself. I don't have to worry about proving myself. See, because I'm dead. And my life is actually hidden in Christ. You can't even see me. I'm hidden in Christ. But check this out. He says, when Christ, who is my life appears then I will appear also with him in glory Amen. so 
since, my, since I'm dead and you can't see me, but when I manifest his life, then you'll actually see who I really am and it will be more glorious. So instead of me trying to make me look better, all I got to do is show you him and you'll see how good I really look. Amen. See, so my job is to demonstrate his character. That's right. See, I don't have to defend myself. That's right. All I got to do is demonstrate him. See, I, 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 I was telling somebody this the other day. I never forget it. It was 11 years ago. I met Pastor Tony, and I couldn't even believe how I got to where I was. One week, I was watching him on TV. The next week, I'm sitting in his hotel room. And I was hurting because people were mistreating me. For the gospel. And I remember his words. They will never leave my ears. He said, you don't have to worry about proving yourself to anybody. If you keep living long enough, your life will prove it to them. See, what he was really telling me, all you got to do is keep showing them Jesus. See, we make the mistake of keep trying to show them us. Amen. See, he said, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. The Amplified Bible says it this way. So kill, deaden, deprive of power the evil desire lurking in your members. Those animal impulses and all the earthly in you that is employed in sin. Amen. See, all that stuff in you, all that get back. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that right there. He said, kill, deaden. Deprive all of that of power. He said, you've got to strip all of that of the power. Of that evil that's lurking in your members. That stuff that's in you, that stuff that brings up those thoughts, those things that brings up that, 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 that attitude, that stuff that brings up that response. All of it, he said, kill all of that. He said, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. He said, because, the, because of these, the wrath of God is coming. Look at what he says. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. In other words, he said once upon a time you had no choice but to follow that path. But your life has been renewed. Your spirit has been renewed. So why would you continue walking down that path? He said, but now you must rid yourselves of all such these Things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other. Since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. The Amplified Bible says it this way. The new spiritual self, which is ever in the process of being renewed and remolded into fuller and more perfect knowledge upon knowledge after the image, the likeness of him who created it. In other words, by continuing to develop his character. Verse 12 says, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion. Kindness, 
humility, gentleness, patience, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. In other words, demonstrate the same character toward others that God demonstrated toward you. Amen. See, for some reason, that seems to be so difficult for us. But all we got to do is stop and think what I want God looking at me, treating me like I want to treat. Notice how I say how I want to treat. Because you got to catch it in the won't stage. I ain't saying how we treating, how I want to treat. See, you got to catch that thing before that desire becomes full grown and gives birth to sin. See, when it wells up in my heart that I want to say something. I just said, now what I want God to say that to me. When I want to respond to certain, is that how I would want God to respond to me? Matter of fact, is that how God responded to me when I did the same thing? Because it's funny how we can do the same thing to people that we always do to God. We get mad with people for their unfaithfulness. Because they don't treat us right. But we never treat God right. They don't give us what we think we deserve. But we never give God what he deserves. But we don't want God mad with us. We couldn't handle it. We stopped talking to folk. And don't want God. And I stopped talking to us. See, we've got to demonstrate the same character toward others that God has demonstrated toward us. He says, and over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. See, that's what his character looks like. And the more we grow in him, the more we will demonstrate his glory. Matter of fact, Paul tells us this way. He says, be imitators of God as dearly loved children. Yes. Tell your neighbor, we've got to develop, got to develop our, character. our character. Go over to Galatians chapter 5. Paul says, for you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. Now, whenever we talk about developing character and living for Christ, I always hear people make excuses as if sin is okay. You know, well, well you know, uh, you know, we're not under the law no more, so, you know, I I'm free to do, you know, See, before we had no choice but to do what the flesh desired. But Christ set us free. And our freedom is not an excuse for the flesh to go unleashed. He says, but through love, serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, be let, beware lest you be consumed by one another. See, our flesh was designed to react to what it experiences in the natural. So immature believers will try to justify their behavior by what others do. But that's a character flaw. Because that's not how God deals with us. 
The Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And he also says, while we were still yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. So we must learn to walk in the spirit instead of concentrating on what we see and feel in the flesh. We need to focus on what he said. Look at verse 16. He says, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. In other words, when you consistently submit to and follow the lead of the Holy Spirit, you will not do the things that the carnal nature desires. Amen. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So that you do not do the things that you wish. See, the spirit and the flesh are in direct opposition to one another. And the purpose is to keep you from doing what you want to do. See, it is to keep you from cursing them folk out. See, y'all church folk funny. Y'all act like y'all the only one got cussing you. <laughs> yeah, see, see, pastor got cussing him too. But see, it's the character of God that keeps that cuss from coming out. Amen. 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 See, I, see, one of my boys used to say, you don't know when God saved me, he saved you too. <laughs> see, you, you, you got to recognize, see, that spirit... Is an opposition with the flesh to keep me from doing what I want to do. Amen. See, if you recall, I told you to be consumed with human reasoning and sensual desires is death. So the spirit is trying to save you from yourself. Yes. Tell your neighbor, it's for your own good. Yes. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. See, because the flesh was designed to interact with the world. So it desires to do what is pleasing to the senses, which are idolatry, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. See, this is why this is so important. The problem with walking in the flesh is that will, it will keep you from inheriting the kingdom of God. Wow. What do you mean, Pastor? Jesus said... He was giving us the keys to the kingdom. But when our character is flaws, it's like having the keys, but not knowing which locks they open. See, the word kingdom means sovereignty, dominion, or a king's authority. So what Jesus was giving us was God's abilities or his power. But without his character, we're unable to wield it. What do you mean, Pastor? See, everybody wants the gifts of the Spirit. They want to be anointed. They want the power of God. But they don't want to take the time or put in the effort to develop the fruit of the Spirit. Verse 22 says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. See, and like any other fruit, they don't grow overnight. Amen. They take time to develop. Yes. See, the seed was placed within you when you got saved. Yes. And sometimes you got to eat some dirt. Amen. 
In other words, you may have to endure some harsh situations. But just know it's developing your character. See, if everybody was going to treat you nice, you would need love. If everything was going to be fun, you would need joy. If you weren't going to experience trouble, you would need peace. If you if they won't gonna test your patience, you would need long suffering. And if you won't gonna feel like doing what your flesh wanted to do, you would need self control. See, but these situations were meant to develop your character. To make you more like God. Amen. So instead of allowing your situation to change you, you have the ability to change your situation. Amen. And this is critical because power without character is dangerous. Yes, yes. And that's why the works of the flesh will keep you from inheriting the kingdom. Yes. See, there's some things you're not ready for simply because your character is not ready. That's right. Tell it. Tell it. You're still harboring unforgiveness, strife, yes. envy, yes. refusing to walk in love, yes. and you can't inherit the kingdom. Yes. See, otherwise it would destroy you. That's right. Because it would multiply your issues. Y'all remember Joseph, right? Had he not dealt with his issues and developed the character of God, he would have aborted his assignment. Y'all remember he was sent to save all of Israel. But had he not developed his character and dealt with his issues, he would have been bitter, harboring unforgiveness, and he would have had his brothers put to death. All of Israel were in the seed of his brothers. His whole job was to save the seed. But had he not dealt with his issues and developed the character of God, he would have reacted to them the way that they treated him. So God could not have allowed him to inherit the kingdom as long as he was walking in his flesh. See, you can't have the gifts of God until you have developed the fruit. Taking him in order to demonstrate his glory. We must develop his character. character. See, because the king's power will only be manifested where the kingdom's character has been developed. I I believe I need to say that again. The king's power will only be manifested where the king's character has been developed. See, that's the problem in the church. We have become enamored with power. Everybody wants power, but nobody wants character. And power without character is dangerous. We see it all the time in these third world countries. You got dictators out here killing people, their own people. After a while, you will have no one to govern. But that's the whole point. There's no character. But you've been assigned to spread God's kingdom. God said you can't have my authority, my power, my abilities unless you have my character. Do you recognize that that is the very definition of Satan. He wanted God's power. 
but he didn't want God's character. So we have to recognize the only thing we should seek is character. Yes. Everything in my life I want to look like God. Because yes. he created me in his image. Amen. So I'm already a spirit. And he created me in his likeness. The problem was that likeness got corrupted. So my job is now to develop that likeness so that I can manifest the ability that he placed within me. So that I can actually walk in the dominion that he actually originally designed for me to have. Verse 25 says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. See, you are a spirit that possesses a soul and lives in a body. So don't allow your flesh to dictate your life. You were created in God's image and in his likeness. But in order to demonstrate his glory, you got to develop his character. Amen? Amen. God bless you today. telling you so many people have derailed their destiny simply because they refuse to allow their character to be developed there are no place that your gifts can take you You don't want to go anywhere that your character can't keep you. That's the problem. We're so enamored with power, the gifts, the abilities. But without the character, none of it will last. Our job is to demonstrate his glory. To show people what God looked like. We get so caught up in the miracles, the signs, the wonders. But God said, I'm not putting that in the hands of people who don't have my heart. We got to develop our character. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're watching with us today. God desires you to be a part of his family. You can be restored today. You don't have to continue to live a life in your flesh. Dictated by the situations and circumstances. Of the world around you. The Bible says that if you would believe in your heart. And confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ you can be saved. Jesus gave up his life to pay for your sins. You didn't have the ability to get it right with God. You didn't have the ability to pay for your own sins. So God sent his only begotten son to become a sacrifice for you. All you have to do is accept that offer. So if you desire to do that today, would you just pray with me? Precious God, I know that My life has been full of sin. I've not gotten it right. And I need to be saved. Come into my heart. Become my Lord and Savior. I give up my life. And I take yours. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. From this day forward, if you prayed that prayer. You're now a part of the body of Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ was crucified, died, and resurrected 
and now seats at the right hand of the Father. He did all of that for you. There's nothing the enemy can do to stop you. And if you did that, you're a part of the body of Christ. The next step in your journey is finding a Bible teaching, Bible believing church that you can be discipled. And if you need one, if you would click on the link on this video, send us a message, let us know. We'll help you find one in your area. If you're in the Lynchburg area, we'd love to have you here at my church, Lynchburg, 1717 Park Avenue. Yes. Well, we love you today. Thank you for spending your time with us. Amen. Amen. God bless you today.